Zune. Remember the Zune? This was Microsoft's interesting little media player from 2006. These things were not exactly successful, losing the MP3 player wars to the obviously more popular iPod. But that didn't stop some people from absolutely loving these things, myself included. I mean, heck, I used to carry this player in my pocket literally everywhere. This thing got me through high school. Does that make me the weird kid? Leave your answer in the comments below. Seriously though, it would be hard not to get attached to something you had kept with you for so long. I've had this player twice as long as my dog Ollie, and I'm pretty attached to that stinky little guy. In this video, I'll be seeing just how far I can upgrade my old 30 gigabyte Zune. This is going to be a fun one, so stay tuned. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay offers all the services you need for prototyping and production of your electronic projects. With PCBWay, you can order a wide variety of circuit boards, including advanced multi-layer PCBs, and even those cool flexible PCBs. You can even order your PCBs assembled so they're ready to use when they arrive at your door. Did you know that PCBWay can help with other parts of your project too? That's right, PCBWay now offers services for 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and even injection molding plastics. All of these services are available with fast turnaround times and competitive prices. For your next project, be sure to visit PCBWay.com for the easiest prototyping experience. Mad Mod. <laughs> So here's the plan. Today, this Zune will be receiving a massive overhaul. I will be adding a huge 3000 milliamp hour battery, a brand new 128 gigabyte solid state drive. I will also be adding wireless charging capability, and if everything goes right, an internal Bluetooth audio transmitter. Hopefully there's enough room inside the Zune to fit everything. Let's see exactly how much space we have to work with by completely disassembling the device. To begin the disassembly process, I'll be using a very small flathead screwdriver to pry out this plastic cover around the charging port. Removing this cover reveals two small Phillips head screws. I'll be removing those using a double zero Phillips head bit. Now the back side of the case can be pulled off. It's held on with some plastic clips around the edge of the device, so I will be using one of these plastic spudgers to unclip those before removing the back side of the Zune. Now I can remove the back cover, being extra careful around the headphone jack and the lock switch at the top. Here is the battery. It's connected via this ribbon cable down here at the bottom of the Zune. I'm going to go ahead and unclip that to remove the battery. Next, I'll have to remove this metal plate. It looks like there's four screws holding this thing in place. This piece hinges up from the bottom, revealing the hard drive contained within. The hard drive is connected via this ribbon cable. This type of connection is called a 40-pin ZIF socket. After the hard drive has been unplugged, it can be removed from the device. There is a piece of tape securing the top of the hard drive enclosure. Here is the original hard drive. This thing is 30 gigabytes in size and there's actually a little spinning disk in there. I'll be replacing this drive with something much better. This is a 128 gigabyte solid state drive. This drive happens to be made by KingSpec. I was very happy to find this drive since there are not many hard drives that use this socket type anymore. I'll be installing this drive later in the video as I'm planning on tackling the most challenging modifications first. Let's continue disassembling. The front control panel is connected via this ribbon cable. I'll go ahead and unclip that. Next, there are six screws that attach the main board and LCD to the front part of the case. After removing the main board, I will unclip the LCD from the main board. The LCD is attached via this ribbon cable. Now that the Zune has been completely disassembled, I can work on installing the Bluetooth transmitter. Here is the device that I will be using to transmit Bluetooth audio. This is one of the cheapest Bluetooth transmitters I could find. I chose this particular device because of its small footprint. I think once it's disassembled, it will fit inside the Zune's shell. For power, this device uses a standard 5 volts that comes from a USB connection. 
The Zune's internal battery outputs about 3.8 volts. I'm going to use this variable voltage regulator to step that 3.8 volts up to the 5 volts that is needed by the Bluetooth module. I'll just have to make a few adjustments once it's actually connected to the battery. This voltage regulator can be turned on and off with a signal wire so it doesn't require a switch. According to a Reddit post made by user that Canadian. This chip provides a switching signal that is used to enable or disable the Zune's Wi-Fi capabilities. I will be connecting a new signal wire to this chip. This switching signal will be used to turn the voltage regulator on and off. This will allow me to turn the Bluetooth antenna off or on from within the Zune software without requiring a physical switch to be installed. Here is a close-up look at that new signal wire connection. Next, I will disassemble the Bluetooth module to make sure that it easily fits inside the Zune. For my power source, I will be tapping onto the Zune's battery socket. I will be attaching a power wire and a ground wire. Once these solder joints are in place, I'm going to use some Kapton tape to hold the wires down. These solder connections are very small, so I don't want this cable moving around and allowing the wire to come loose. Here is a close-up look at the new power wire connections. I will be connecting these wires to the voltage input and the ground connection of the voltage regulator. I will also connect the signal wire that was wired earlier to the switching signal pin on the voltage regulator. I'm leaving all these wires extra long so I can easily test the voltage regulator. I will go back and shorten all these wires before finishing the installation and closing the zoom. Next, I'll connect the voltage regulator's voltage out pin to the voltage input pin of the USB connection on the Bluetooth module. I will also connect the USB B's ground pin to the shared ground pin on the voltage regulator. To review how this works, the battery terminal will carry 3.8 volts to the voltage regulator across this red wire. The white and blue wire will send a signal to the voltage regulator to tell it to turn on. The voltage regulator will step the 3.8 volts up to 5 volts and then send the 5 volts out across the orange wire to the Bluetooth module. I will have to partially reassemble the Zune to test this out, of course. I'll put this thing back together far enough to turn it on and draw voltage from the battery. This will allow me to measure and adjust the voltage output from the voltage regulator. First, I will need to turn wireless on in the Zune settings to enable the voltage output. Then I will connect my multimeter to measure the voltage being output by the voltage regulator. It looks like the regulator is not putting out enough voltage as it is. That explains why the Bluetooth module hasn't turned on yet. I'll need to adjust this small potentiometer until the reading on the multimeter is very close to 5 volts. After setting the voltage output, the Bluetooth module powers on. This flashing blue light means it's in receiver mode though. I'll need to flip this little switch to change the Bluetooth module into transmitter mode. The red flashing light indicates the module is powered on in transmitter mode. Now that the Bluetooth module powers on, I need to send it an audio signal. To do this, I will be running internal wires that connect to the Zune's headphone jack. I will be using a gray wire for the ground pin, a yellow wire for the left audio channel, and a green wire for the right audio channel. I also had to connect these other contacts to ground so the Zune thinks there's always a set of headphones plugged in. Otherwise, it will not output audio. To save even more space, I will remove the headphone jack from the Bluetooth module and solder these audio channel wires directly to the Bluetooth module. I will also shorten the USB connection pads with a set of snips. Now I can reconnect the voltage regulator, this time with much shorter power wires. The Bluetooth module is now completely installed. Here is what it looks like with the wires folded away neatly. I have realized that this little metal frame piece will be in the way once my battery is installed. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that now. Next, I'll need to run wires for the wireless charger. The wireless charger needs to connect to the Zune charging port. To prepare the Zune for wireless charging, I will connect a ground wire to pin 24 or the leftmost pin on the Zune charging port. 
the power wire gets connected to pin number one or the rightmost pin on the Zoom charging port. I will again be using Kapton tape to keep these wires from moving around too much. In retrospect, I probably should have used some smaller gauge wire here. It ended up being very difficult to keep these wires attached to the tiny little pins at the Zoom charging port. With all that wiring out of the way, I can finally reassemble the Zoom for the last time. Here's the original battery, and here's the new battery. At 3000 milliamp hours, this thing is over three times the size of the original battery. I think this model is a replacement part for a fifth generation iPod, but it should fit nicely inside the Zune. It plugs into the battery socket just like the original battery did. Up next is the SSD. For this thing to fit, I'm going to have to remove it from this little enclosure. Even though it's larger in size, this SSD should draw less power than the original drive. This will extend the battery life of the new battery even farther. I will plug in the SSD using the original Zune ribbon cable. Here, I'm using some Kapton tape to keep the battery and the ribbon cable from shifting around inside the device. I will be repurposing the thin plastic lining from the original hard drive enclosure along with some tape to protect the new hard drive. Since I will not be reinstalling the hard drive enclosure, this should give the hard drive a little bit of thermal and electrical protection. The final piece to install is the wireless charger. The wireless charger's inductor requires a magnet to sit on top of. I will be positioning the magnetic sticker like this directly on top of the SSD. After deciding on the position for the wireless charger, I will connect the wires that were ran up from the Zune's charging port. The red wire from pin 1 gets connected to the voltage pin on the wireless charger. The black wire from pin 24 gets connected to the ground pad on the wireless charger. The additional grounding point shown here is connected to the grounding point on the voltage regulator. With the last modifications wired up, I can finally put the back cover back on the Zune. As expected, this is a tight fit, so I'll be careful snapping the back cover into place. I will also replace the two screws at the charging port and reinstall the plastic cover. Powering on the Zune for the first time results in this error message. This is because the new solid state hard drive does not have the Zune operating system installed. Even after following the instructions and connecting the Zune to the PC, I'm still faced with an error message, as it appears the Zune software can no longer download the needed update. Luckily, I found this awesome website. This is zuneupdate.com. This website is an archive for all software and media associated with the Zune devices. Here, I was able to find the Zune firmware that I was looking for and a tutorial on how to install it. This website even has the old backgrounds and wallpapers that came with the Zune software. After placing the hosts file in the correct directory, the Zune software appears to have an update for my device. After applying the update, the Zune software goes through the setup process just like it would for a brand new Zune. Now it's time to sync some media and test out all these new features. The higher capacity hard drive appears to be working as indicated in the device menu of the Zune software here. Let's see what it says on the device itself. Ten gigabytes used and 108 free. Very nice. The battery appears to be providing sufficient power. Let's go ahead and test out the wireless charging. The Zune's charging icon will not indicate that the device is charging unless there is something plugged in. I can verify the wireless charging is working using the status light on my wireless charger here. Another way to verify that wireless charging is functioning is by powering the Zune down and allowing the wireless charger to turn it on, just as the Zune would turn on if it is plugged in. And now to test out the Bluetooth. I will be pairing my Zune to my Audio-Technica M50X BT headphones. 
After switching the Zune's wireless setting on, the Bluetooth module inside will automatically attempt to pair to the first available device. My headphones are in pairing mode, so let's verify that they can get connected. Bluetooth connected. Well, that's it. This thing works. There's a little bit of audio interference when using Bluetooth if the headphones are cranked all the way up to the max volume and the Zune is also cranked all the way up to the max volume. This is most likely due to the cheap quality of the Bluetooth adapter I used. Overall, I'm extremely satisfied with the way this thing turned out though. For me, the Zune is a great trip down memory lane. Did you ever have a fateful MP3 player that followed you everywhere? Leave a comment below the video telling me your favorite media player. You may have noticed this pink zoom in a few shots. This one does not work. Go follow my Twitch channel to catch my next live stream where I will be repairing this guy and telling the hilarious story of how it stopped working in the first place. You can see me live at twitch.tv slash modulus. That's twitch.tv slash m0dulus. Be sure to subscribe here on YouTube and go check out my other videos. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.